I got the hammer. Look, uh, last year I went through a really horrible year. Depression, all kinds of shit. I didn't even, well, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be here this year. So being here as the event is amazing. Hammer, do you have any any recommendations for anybody that's going through a tough time that needs to get through it? It's real simple. You have to get help. You, you can't do it on your own. Nobody can do it on their own. I couldn't do it on my own. I got help and I continue to get help. I'll, I'll get help the rest of my life. Oh yeah. It, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a new lifestyle and I love it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get help. That, qu that question meant a lot to me. Thank you for answering that, Mark. Thank you. Uh, all right, for my comment, um, bro, um, Mark, you know you look like a buff atmosphere? That's for you. Yeah, that's for you. What? That's Frank, man. That's for Frank Mir. Yeah. Frank Mir. You know who Atmosphere is, the rapper? Nah. You look like a very buff version of him, and that shit's dope. It's a good thing. Yeah. All right, Frank was about to beat your ass. <laughs> hey, that would have been a dope video. Okay, thank you, man. All right, back over here, man. Uh, how you doing? First off, big fan of all you guys up on stage. Uh, I got a question for DC. So you've uh, obviously fought John Jones and worked a little bit with Cyril Gunn. What are the biggest differences between the two, and where do you think each excels against each other? I haven't really worked with Cyril Gunn. Like. That video the other day when I grabbed his leg was the extent to which we worked together. Um, I think Cyril's advantages are going to be in the footwork and the ability to match John physically, right? He's as big as anyone Jones has ever fought. And for Jones, it's it's honestly the, the mind, the fight IQ, you know? I, I like Cyril Don as a person. He's one of my buddies. But even he'll tell you that leg lock he tried against Francis Ngannou essentially cost him a championship. Jones would never make that mistake in a fight. Right? So Jones's biggest advantage is his mind and to be able to stay locked in, in the fight. Sorgon's going to have to match that if he wants an opportunity to win tomorrow night. Thank you. Go ahead, Minnesota. It's for Stephen. When you get your title shot, what is going to be your approach you take when you fight John Jones? They're just assuming he's going to win. Well, whoever it is, I mean, Vince Jones it is, but uh, my approach would be he's going to beat that ass. I'm going to train hard and I do what I do every camp and don't stop. It's mine. Thank you. And I want to say to everybody up there, thank you for all the great fights you've given us and will continue to give us. Thank you. Hey DC, uh, my question is for you. Um, as somebody who fought John Jones, you think um, his pictogram experience or some of his bad behavior experiences behind him, or do you think that will show in every way? I don't know. I mean, you kind of hope that you kind of hope that he's moved past that and uh, he goes forward and he can build a resume without all that stuff because he's. He's essentially exonerated himself from all the stuff. So now it's a fresh start. He has an opportunity to not mess up. And as long as he doesn't mess up, we can only judge him on what he's doing now. The reason I had such strong opinions is because of what he was doing when we were competing. Now he's back after three years. Let's see what happens. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, my first question is for DC of the YouTube channel, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. <laughs> Uh, you've had a very illustrious and beautiful career. My question is, is there anything you regret, regret, would have done differently at any point in your career? I probably would have retired after uh, I beat Steve Bay the first time or beat Derek Lewis, just to be done, because I, I threw my back out and I, I just wasn't as good, you know, but, and also I might not have threw that kick against Frank. You remember that kick I tried to do? When I jumped and tried to kick you and you looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I might have, I might have not did that in the octagon because people still make fun of me about it. Jumping and trying to kick, uh, Frank, they call me the Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> My second question is for John. 
Uh, you've called some incredible fights in your career, but which fight would you say is your favorite of all time? Well, I gotta shout out the lead horse, Mark Hunt, who fought Bigfoot Silva in Brisbane, Australia in 2013 because we had a heavyweight panel. I still believe that is the greatest heavyweight fight in UFC history. I mean, but the most memorable moment for me was certainly last August. Headshot, bang, in Salt Lake City with Leon Edwards, right? So, uh, DC and I are obviously going to London, England in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll see what Kamaru has to say about all of that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Go ahead. This question's for everybody. Everybody's assuming John Jones is going to win. If he does, where do you rank him among champ champs? Well, and if not one, who's one? Well, you got to... I, I mean, I thought champ champ was having the belts at the same time. But so did Randy Couture and all those guys. But for if he wins, I mean, he's held belts in two weight classes. He has to rank around the top, right? Because anytime a guy wins the two heaviest weights, it has to matter. So he'll... Uh, will be ranked pretty high. One, two. Well, all the guy, everybody that's held two belts at the same time have to be, right? Henry and Amanda and Connor, like, it's a different uh, category. It'd be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like DC said, honestly, I can just, I mean, you have to hold the belt twice and then two you know, at the same time, but, I mean, I don't know. You'd be high up there. I put John as number one fighter. I think that uh, I know sometimes people want to detract from some of his occurrences that occurred outside the cage. I get it. Um, but if we're just talking about the minute they close that cage door, I've sat down and got over film with John. I hear how he thinks about things. I've trained with him for two years. Uh, I've seen him. If you look at his body of work, essentially he's undefeated. I mean, his only loss against Matt Hamill was a DQ. So you got a guy who basically has never lost in the UFC. He's fought a who's who going through the gambit. I mean, it isn't like he had an easy path. One of the hardest weight classes in the UFC is the 205 weight class. And I think he's utterly dominated it to a point where even when, you know a guy's good when he fights a fight and it's just kind of close even, and the other guy does decent, he still loses. And people are disappointed in you because of how dominant you are. So I put John as the best fighter in the world top of now. Um, I mean, based on the scenario, if he wins this weekend, he's on the Mount um, Rushmore, but I'm not going to have him at number one. I still give that to DC. You got to do it more than just one time. If he does, if he beats Gon, and he beats, beats Stipe, that's a different story. But if we're just going off just the Gon win, he's on the Rushmore, but he's not number one. I put him in number one, especially if he wins, for sure I got him in number one, the guy refuses to lose, he's undefeated and uh, nobody can top that, and, he, and he's fought for so long, been around forever, he's just a star. Thank you man, alright back over here, we got just a few more minutes, go ahead. Hello, this is a dream come true from a UFC fan from North Dakota since 1994. Thank you all. My question to the panel is, I've got three young boys all in boxing. What advice do you have to parents and young fighters of things we should be doing to make sure they're safe and learning how to use the craft properly? Who wants to take that one? I'm really Get him in wrestling. Put him in wrestling. Hey, look, That's I'm a black belt jiu-jitsu. My daughter and my son right now wrestle a lot more than they do jiu -jitsu. If, you, if you look at it, if you're thinking about an MMA career, and even just as far as boxing, injuries, jiu-jitsu injuries, wrestling's the ultimate thing you can put your children in, and I'm speaking first-hand experience. Even with my experience in boxing, jiu-jitsu, my children all wrestle first and foremost. You can pick up on the other skills later. It's hard to just learn to wrestle. Because it's so difficult to do and it's so like hard on the body. So put it establishes so many other aspects of your mind. Wrestling does it. Basically, the attributes there are second to none. Good. Thank you. All right, final question. It looks like. Go ahead, sir. Good. This one. This one's for Curtis. What's it like you saw Mark Hunt in Australia? The crowd hated you every single time you took him down. How do you block that out and just keep shooting and take him down? 
I like I like to piss off the uh, the like away team. Like if we got to high school, I would go to Russian Beach and you go to the other team's high school and you beat them in one of their teachers and one of their students. I like that. I like that energy. Uh, I like going to the other people's homes and beating them. So that was fun. I, and I like to break records and I want to break that takedown record. Thank you. Break my heart, and I'm still not over it. He took off. It's not Sorry about that. Any food. Oh, okay. All right, thank you all so much for your participation. A lot of special things coming up over the next hour, so stay here. One final time, a hand for the panel. Daniel Corbier, Steve Bagnicic, Frank Mir, Curtis Blades, and the Hammer, Mark Cohn.